Hello, and welcome to the pre-recorded demo for Cavern's ARAP 8.1. Today we're going to talk about what Cavern ARAP is. ARAP stands for Automated Risk Analysis Platform. With ARAP, you are able to scan your devices for compliance. And that compliance can be for anything in regards to Center for Internet Security, HIPAA, DISA, ISO, NIST, PCI 3.1, as well as SOC 2. All of these guidelines are compliance standards. What Cavern does is we take these compliance standards and we map them to scans. And when we take when we create these scans, we're creating them from the guidelines. So when we look at the SOC 2 compliance standard, we're looking at those controls that can be automated through programming. With these controls, we can then map them back and look for specific policies that may be able to satisfy those controls. This is unique because we start with the compliance standard and then we build out the scans for that. We don't map our own scans to the compliance standard. This gives you a more comprehensive scan based on that compliance standard. Each policy is essentially a configuration check for the specific control. When you do a scan, you'll be able to get data back within our dashboard. Our dashboard is going to show different aspects of the results. So every policy that is a part of that guideline is weighted one through five. One and two is info, three and four is watch, five is alert. What this graph is showing you here is the differences between the policies that have passed, the policies that have failed, and what their weights are. Over here we have our devices by type, so you can see what operating systems are running within your environment. Down below we have our heat map that is going to show you all of your different policies mapped back to NIST control areas. Now what we've done is we've mapped all of our policies, whether they're NIST or not, back to NIST control areas because NIST is really good about generalizing different aspects of the IT environment. You can click through and see different aspects of the NIST control areas and dig down into those policies that have been scanned for those rules that pertain to that NIST control area. We can also see the specific devices that this policy was run on and be able to get the results. Being able to see the results shows you exactly what is being tested on this device. For instance, here we can see some tests for the specific version of the operating system. And down here, we're checking to make sure the domain policy for the Windows Firewall displays a notification. And we're checking this registry key. This item was not found, which shows that this policy has failed. When looking at the results for a complete guideline, we can see an overall view of each guideline that has been run on your systems. When we're looking at the guidelines here, we can see it, all of the different guidelines, and then you can pick which guideline you want to get a report on. So we can look at NIST, and when you click on it, you can see some details down below, starting with the score, then we have how many devices were scanned, as well as your score history. Now your score history is important because it shows compliance over time. When you first install Cavern, your score will probably be relatively low, but over time, as you are fixing the issues, you will be able to see your score go up and to the right. This shows immediate value for your team, as well as for Cavern, to see that you are becoming more compliant, as well as to show the auditors that you are sustaining compliance. We can generate a overview report that's going to give some information about the compliance guideline. We will include that score history as well. And then we include some areas of concern. Now the areas of concern are not gonna list everything that has failed. It lists everything that is a weight of five. If there are no policies that have failed with a weight of five, this section will not be here. We also break it down to the different guideline sections because we do map back to, to the controls within that compliance standard. We tell you exactly where you need to focus your attention. Then we give some details. When we're doing the details, a couple different things we point out. Policy name, the description, map it back to the control ID, then we also give you the fix suggestion to fix this issue. Failed devices, so we show you which devices this policy has failed on. Then we go to the next policy. Now that we've seen the overview, 
let's go into the individual devices. When we're looking at the devices, we can see all of our different devices listed. We can choose any of the devices, and at a glance, we can see what the score of that device is. This is a cumulative score of all of the guidelines that have been scanned on a device. A device can be scanned by multiple guidelines. So if I were to look at the details of this machine, I will be able to see that there were multiple guidelines scanned for this device. For instance, it was scanned for CIS, it was scanned for HIPAA, it was scanned for ISO, as well as NIST. The score up top is a cumulative of all of those scans. We can dig into the details of this by creating a report for this device. I'll show you that report here in a second. Now let's see what information we are pulling when we do initial scan for a device. You can see here we have some information about the device itself. What's the IP address, what's the MAC address, operating system. Then down below we pull some additional information. We can pull uh, CPU, what disks are mounted to that device so we can see disk utilization. We can also see what services are running on the machine as well as what applications are installed and what user accounts are set up on that device. All of this information is pretty useful because what we can do is we can group the machines based on this information. Tags within Cavern ARAP are very useful to logically group your devices. When you logically group a device, essentially what you are doing is you're allowing Cavern ARAP to target the devices that are a member of that tag. So down below I can see I have some servers here. My group is called AWS Windows because what I've done is I'm looking for all of my operating systems of Microsoft Windows as well as as a parent type of Amazon AWS. Now we can create these tags based on a whole bunch of attributes including operating system, IP address, uh, what the parent type is such as Amazon AWS. We can also go into the device attributes and this is where we were seeing before the different attributes that we showed as part of those device detail screen. So I can group my devices based on what applications are installed on there, what services are running, as well as what domain it's a member of. All of these can be utilized to create that dynamic group around your devices. Then you target the group or the tag with the compliance guidelines instead of having to target each individual device. This allows some automation as well, because as soon as a device becomes a member of that tag, it will automatically be targeted with that guideline. How do we go about finding those devices? Well, there's multiple ways. For starters, we can do it based on an IP range. This is where we will do a ping sweep across the network for the subnet that you put here. You can put any range that you'd like. So the starting IP address, the ending IP address, for the name. Down here, I'm going to sidestep a little bit, is our distributed scan engine. What our distributed scan engine allows you to do is put a scanning engine in a remote location. That scanning engine will then perform the scanning locally, consolidate the results, and send them back to the main server to be combined with all of the other servers in the interface. This allows you to spread out your scanning as well as provide scanning within a secured network because our distributed scan engine was specifically designed to not require any inbound ports. So when you set up your distributed scan engine within that secured environment, all that is needed is a route back to the main server. Nothing needs to be opened up from the outside going in. Another way that we can discover new devices is with our integration with Amazon Web Services as well as Microsoft Azure. When we look at these accounts, we're pulling in some information about them such as the instances that are running within that cloud account. We utilize this to be able to get the IP address of the devices. This allows us to then utilize this as a discovery mechanism. From here, we do pull some information about your EC2 configuration, such as the security groups that are installed, as well as volumes, network interfaces, key pairs are being used. All of this information is then utilized to provide a scan for AWS best practices. The main reason you want to utilize the AWS best practices is to be able to protect the account for AWS. Protecting just the servers doesn't do anything if a malicious actor 
gets into your AWS account and can change settings and delete your virtual machines. You want to be able to provide security around your AWS account as well as the workloads running inside. Now that we can gather the information around uh, AWS, Azure, on-premises networks by doing an IP scan, we can schedule these to run on, let's say, a weekly basis. And when we schedule that, what we're doing is we're looking for new machines as well as scanning existing machines. So the way the workflow will work is you schedule your scans, you have your tag set up. The tags are set to automatically target the devices that are members of that tag. This then allows the device to automatically be scanned with that compliance guideline. There's automation built in once you set everything up the effort is very minimal going forward. When looking at tags, we can also run a report around the tags themselves. So I have a PCI tag here that is for my PCI machines. So my, my machines that are in scope. I can create a report here that will give me details about my devices. Now, this is different than the overview report that we saw earlier. This report is going to be very detailed. It's very much focused for the operational. We're gonna get some information about the group. So what are the members? And then we can dig in the details of each individual member. Now, before I talked about that, you can run the report on a de individual device within the interface. This is the report that you will get. This, this tab right here would be in a single report. The tag report allows you to group all of those device reports into a single Excel workbook. What this is gonna show you is that same information about the device, and then we're gonna show you every single policy that was run on the device, including mapping back to the control ID of that specific guideline. We're gonna give you the weight of the policies, the pass fail state, and include the fixed suggestions to go along with that. This allows your operational people to be able to filter these columns, maybe for all the fails that have a weight of five, and utilize that to then create work tickets to go and remediate these issues. This report includes all the different guidelines that were scanned for this device. All of these are available to be able to take this and create those work tickets. Cavern ARAP can also be used for network discovery. Because we are scanning the network, looking for any device that is on the network, we will contact any device that we can communicate with. We will attempt to log into that device. If we are unsuccessful from logging into that device for some reason, maybe it's a rogue device on the network, we will display that here under inaccessible devices. With this, you can then have an opportunity to go to those devices and determine why they are inaccessible. Cavern ARAP provides a very simple, straightforward and meaningful way to scan your network for specific compliance guidelines. Thank you for watching the Cavern ARAP 8.1 demo.